The story begins with a group of adventurers fighting against a giant golem. In this world, adventuring parties are formed of members that take on different roles. The golem attacks the group's healer, but is quickly blocked by Rude, the party's tank. Being a tank isn't as popular since they don't deal damage, but this is the story of how he became the strongest. They defeat the golem, and afterward, we see Rude fantasizing about his little sister Manisha. However, he is interrupted by Nin, who scolds him for making weird faces. She can't believe Rude only thinks about his sister, and asks him to think about other things like falling in love, while looking at him in a suggestive way. But Rude is just really dumb, and says that no one is more beautiful than his sister, which irritates Nin. He explains that he can't think of anything else right now, because his sister has an incurable disease, and it's his motivation to find the secret treasure in the labyrinth, rumored to grant wishes. But he thinks that after the last embarrassing fight, it will be hard to get the treasure. Rude also feels bad for his team, because he lost the defense of his shield during the battle, and apologizes to Nin for overburdening her. But Nin encourages him, saying he's an excellent tank, and without him, they would all be dead. She also points out that his shield's defense is 9999, the highest value ever, so she tells him to keep his head up. At that moment, a group led by the hero appears, known for conquering many labyrinths. We learn his name is Kilgas, and he apologizes for being late. He is accompanied by the twins Lilia and Lily, and with a whole party together, Kilgas introduces two new members of the group. But this annoys Nin because the labyrinths have a six-member limit, and with the two new members, they will have seven people. But Kilgas explains that they will have six, announcing that Rude is out, because his abilities have become problematic in battle. Nin tries to defend him to prevent his expulsion, but Kilgas points out how he lost his shield during the fight, thinking that Rude's two unknown abilities could be weakening his shield since they have unknown effects. Kilgas notes that the two new girls are evasion tanks, which has been a popular role lately because they can fight while dodging, unlike Rude who can only tank the attacks. Rude respects the decision, and as he prepares to leave, Kilgas also takes his sword, blaming him for the loss of money from the previous day and calling him a useless tank who wastes his shield, but the twins wish him the best of luck. While Nin seems to want to cry, Rude eases the situation, apologizing for having accepted her party invitation, but not being strong enough to keep up with the group. Nin doesn't believe this, and she's sad they won't see each other again. But Rude tells her that he will live in the village with his younger sister in Avancha, and hopes that she will visit them someday. Although he might not be there all the time, he assures her that they will see each other again. Nin is cheered up by the promise, but says that she won't miss him. This makes Rude smile, and he confesses he will be excited for their reunion. Later, Rude sits in the town square, thinking about what Kilgus said, wondering if his unknown abilities reduce his shield. He decides that before going to the village, he needs to find someone with the ability to identify and understand his abilities. At that moment, he hears that a small D-rank group is going to do a guard job and is heading to Curas, which is near where he needs to go, so he takes the opportunity to join the group of newbies. They are surprised by Rude's size and ask him what rank he is, but this reminds him that his rank is at F, because he spent all his time in the labyrinth instead of completing jobs. However, the girl recognizes him, and they accept him because he was part of the hero's group. They get on the wagon and head to Kiras. The adventurers spend three days traveling together, and during the journey, they reach a stretch with a lot of fog, when Rude stops them, detecting something unusual. When they get off the wagon, they see a silhouette, and as the fog dissipates, a girl appears. As Rude approaches to help her, he notices she's naked, with a magical crystal in her chest. But suddenly, a giant forest snake appears behind her. He tells the girl to hide, and when the creature advances to attack, Rude is ready to defend everyone, provoking the beast with one of his abilities. The snake spits acid at Rude, but it's not very effective thanks to his second ability, which protects him from all status effects. However, the others are still hesitant about attacking the snake, allowing it to throw Rude away. While he's unconscious, Rude has a memory of his sister crying. When he wakes up, he stands back up. But since he doesn't have a sword, he tells the other three that they must attack together, promising to defend them all as the strongest tank. They join the battle and attack the giant serpent, but it soon decides to use its killing strike. Rude stands his ground, and he manages to push it back, giving the other three the chance to attack, and they finally manage to defeat it. Rude leaves them to dissect the creature, and he approaches the mysterious girl. She confesses that she has nowhere to go, 
so Rude offers her to go with him to his village. Although she seems somewhat hesitant, she accepts to go with him. Since she is wearing tattered clothes, the elder gives her a dress as a gift for Rude saving him. While she changes, the elder suggests that she's an escaped slave, but Rude knows she's a homunculus, an artificial human that are normally used as human slaves. They usually don't travel alone, so they think something happened to her. The next day, they reach the path leading to the village. The adventurers want to recruit him, but Rude refuses because he still has other objectives, mentioning the secret treasure. They remember the rumors and comment that the treasure also includes the ability to create homunculus, but they don't like them much, since they are expressionless beings that work like machines. Rude notices the girl's reaction, and finally says goodbye to the group. While walking along, Rude introduces himself to the girl, who tells him she has no name, so he thinks about it, and he decides to call her Luna, which she seems to like. After they finish dinner, Rude steps away and Luna detects something when three wolves emerge. She quickly grabs a knife and easily manages to deal with the wolves. Seeing this, Rude concludes that Luna is an illegally created homunculus because she has her own free will and feelings and can fight unlike the others. Normally, being created illegally means they must be eliminated, but her look reminds him of his sister and for that reason he can't abandon her. After she apologizes for knocking over the pot, Rude says that if she has such strength, she could have eliminated the snake, but she mentions that her specialty is magic, so she doesn't have any melee combat skills. Rude asks about her magical abilities, so she tells him she can enhance magic, as well as the ability to use identify. Rude is surprised hearing this, since it's what he was looking for, and we learn that it's a super rare ability that only one other person possessed, but they died some time ago so Luna is the only one in the world with this ability. Rude wastes no time and asks Luna to read his abilities. She takes his hand and tells him he has four abilities. The first is his ability to provoke enemies to focus on him. The second ability is healthy body, which makes his body tougher and gives him debuff immunity. Rude wonders about his two unknown abilities, and Luna reveals that his third ability is life conversion, which allows him to convert any shield he loses into strength. His fourth ability is the Shield of Sacrifice, which allows him to take on the shield from his allies and absorb damage for them. He realizes that this is what he did before, and he was absorbing damage from other members without knowing, which was how he was losing his shield without getting hit. Rude is happy learning all of this because he was always concerned about his two unknown abilities and didn't expect to learn about them so easily. He thanks Luna, and soon the day arrives, as they make it to the village, and we see that Rude is finally able to be confident in himself, knowing that he actually has incredible abilities. Rude shows Luna around the village, and she finds it beautiful and peaceful. They keep walking, and a girl runs up to them and throws herself on Rude, excited to see him again and wanting to know how long he'll stay so they can go out alone. Another girl wearing armor arrives and pulls the first girl off Rude. He is surprised to see them and asks what they are doing. Milena says she was going to get a hammer, and Philly was patrolling and checking on Manisha, who is fine. Rude is happy to hear this and confesses that he couldn't be at ease while he was away if she and the whole town didn't take care of his little sister. The two also notice Luna, and Rude explains that they met on the way. Milena introduces herself as the blacksmith's model, but Luna seems nervous to say something. When Philly introduces herself, she seems even more nervous and shy than Luna, making her smile. Back at his home, Rude asks Luna to avoid making too much noise, thinking his sister was sleeping, when suddenly Rude notices the table set with his favorite tomato dishes. His sister comes out to see him, and she asks who the girl with him is, but Rude ignores the question, happy to see his sister, to Luna's shock. He recovers and introduces Luna, saying he invited her to stay with them while continuing to admire his little sister, thinking she was a descended goddess. Manisha welcomes Luna and wants her to feel at ease. She asks Rude to rest, since his journey was long. Manisha prepares to make another portion for Luna, and Rude wants to help her. Luna watches the two together and notices that Manisha's hair keeps moving, so Rude explains that she has a unique trait that makes her hair move according to her feelings. Rude asks his sister if she knew they would come thanks to her ability, to which Manisha says she only had a feeling, but she still prepared the food. While eating, Manisha observes that the way Luna holds the spoon is strange. This makes Luna nervous, and she starts to apologize for holding it that way, 
revealing that she has only used utensils a few times, remembering her past. Rude worries when he sees Luna suddenly trembling, but Manisha calms her down, taking her hand and showing her how to better hold the spoon, saying she can teach her little by little, which makes Luna grateful. In the following days, Luna learns various things with them, like writing and household chores, and she decides to prepare food as a thank you for what they taught her in the last three days. And tasting it, Rude and Manisha are surprised at how good it was. Rude starts to think about how quickly Luna developed so many skills, impressed with the great ability of a homunculi to learn. Manisha suggests to Rude that it would be good to show the village to Luna, which Rude thinks is a good idea, wanting to introduce her to everyone. Manisha goes to get real clothes for Luna, and she even offers to help her dress, but Luna suddenly takes the clothes and says she can do it herself. Manisha worries if she offended her, but Rude knows it's because Luna doesn't want her to see the rune on her chest. Outside, Rude points out that the village has no guild, and also only has one blacksmith and one apothecary, so there wasn't much to see, and the most interesting thing there was the orchard. They meet Raisel, who immediately offers his daughter to Rude, and Rude introduces him as the blacksmith and Milena's father. Rude asks Raisel to make a sword for him, remembering how his sword was taken from him, and Raisel agrees to make it without problems with the help of his daughter. Before they continue on their way through the village, Raisel suggests that Rude take Luna to the monster farm. The farm grows plants that turn into monsters, and they are quite nutritious. There are boys that arrive to greet Rude, and seeing Luna, they ask if she is his girlfriend, but they soon dismiss the idea, because he can only be obsessed with his sister. A lady arrives, shouting at the boys to stop bothering them and go back to work, which triggers a flashback in Luna from her time as a prisoner and makes her anxious again. She asks Rude if he has a girlfriend, but he denies it and introduces Grandma Gigi as the village's apothecary. She greets Luna, and seeing how she reacts, Gigi thinks she reminds her of Manisha at first, making Rude think the same. Gigi tells Luna that there, all the young people are like her children, so if she needs something, she can go to her store. Luna calms down after that, and Gigi asks if she would like to harvest with her. The day goes by and everyone harvests the monstrous plants together. Returning home, Rude warns Luna that time passes slowly in the village, but he likes it and asks her what she thinks. Luna remembers everything she went through, and she can't believe how kind everyone is, saying she loves the place and would like to live there forever. She suddenly gets serious while thinking, and makes Rude feel her magic rune, asking if he knows what it is. She confesses that she is not human but a homunculi, created to fight by the neighboring country Brunkles. She apologizes to him while crying for having been hiding the truth, and explains that she was afraid he would kill her. Rude also decides to apologize to her, saying that he already knew she was a homunculi because he had seen the rune when they first met. Luna doesn't understand and asks why he helps her. Rude tells her that he and his sister were poor, and the look Manisha had at that time is the same that Luna has now, and that's why he wanted to help her. Rude asks if she wants to live like a human or like a homunculi, but for Luna, this is an unrealistic illusion, and she is already a homunculi. Rude explains that no one said she can't be human and tells her that he also follows an unrealistic dream, so he asks if she wants to follow an illusion with him. Luna thinks she wants to continue like this, so she decides to follow him, wanting to live as a human. They hold hands, and she calls Rude Master, which he finds strange, but Luna says she wants to call him that. The two return home, and at that moment, Luna confesses to Manisha that she is a homunculi, and apologizes for not having said it before. Manisha already thought she had something strange, and asks Luna if they will continue to be friends. This makes Luna happy, and they hug each other. Manisha also knows that her brother knew everything, and thinks about how her dear brother always helps those who receive help from no one else. After that, Rude and Luna are seen tired finishing cleaning a mansion. Manisha arrives bringing drinks for everyone, making everyone run out to get them. Luna realizes that Manisha is quite popular before noticing how Rude disappeared, running off for the tea. After they refresh themselves, someone asks Rude for a duel. This seems the perfect opportunity for him, so he warns that everyone will be able to fight with him, but only after he fights Philly. Outside, they both prepare, and the rule to determine the winner will be the one who loses more defense. And so, the fight begins. One of the knights comments that neither of them specializes in speed, but already imagines who will make the first move. 
Philly is the first to advance, launching heavy blows, which Rude blocks, realizing how strong she has become. Manisha reveals to Luna that among all the knights in the village, Philly and her brother are special, and their skills should be used against more capable opponents. While the knights shout for Philly, the girls start cheering for Rude, but he gets distracted seeing Manisha. Philly increases the pressure and seizes an opportunity when Rude stumbles, but after blocking the attack, Rude makes his first counterattack using his new offensive ability, which breaks Philly's shield, giving him the victory. This leaves the knight surprised because he broke a 2500 shield with a single blow. Philly asks what that was, and he explains that it was his ability, Vital Conversion. He says he had never used it before, but this fight was perfect to test its power, so he thanks her. Rude is happy that now he won't only be on the defense, because with that, he can also attack. He asks the others who wants to be the next, but no one else seems to want to face him. Luna is impressed with Rude's power, while Manisha thinks her brother is the best. In a flashback years ago, Manisha is alone, abandoned, and waiting for her family. She stays sad and helpless, but soon Rude comes to save her, and Manisha wakes up from this dream in the middle of the night. This seems common for her, and she thinks about how her brother always saves her, but wonders if he is truly happy, or if he would have a better life if it wasn't for her. The next day, Rude greets his sister, but she seems affected by the night before. Luna rushes to them, apologizing for waking up late and not helping with the chores. She feels that she is always being helped, and that she owes them for giving her a home. Luna realizes they know many things and asks to know who taught them. Rude explains that when living on the streets, he was taken as an apprentice, because at the time, the nobles thought about helping the children, so he attended the Knights Academy. However, Manisha has bad memories of that time, since the girls blamed her for limiting Rude. After eating, Rude decides to go to the city, and Luna sees Manisha worried. In a flashback, we see Rude was a great student, so everyone thought he would become a knight. But when passing a room, Manisha overhears girls mentioning that Rude is becoming an adventurer to cure his sister's illness, and they think it's a waste of his talent, and since that day, Manisha thinks it's her fault that her brother chose to be an adventurer. Luna enters the room and tries to cheer her up, but she isn't sure how to do it. Manisha asks how she would feel if a person wasted their life just to be with her, choosing a path that would make them less happy. Luna has no answer, since she never had anybody like that but she thinks that doing this is what makes him happy. Luna understands that Manisha is talking about Rude, and she suggests talking to him, since he helped her despite her being a homunculus, so she thinks he is different from the others. Manisha has trouble behaving in front of Rude, so she has always been distant to push him away, but Luna thinks it's best to tell Rude how she feels. Manisha suddenly feels Rude arriving, and she becomes nervous about what to say, but Luna calms her down and tells her that the best thing is to say what she feels. When Rude arrives, Manisha decides to ask him one thing. She asks if he is happy, and Rude explains that he is. Manisha doesn't understand how he can say that, because he could have a better life without her. So she asks another question, wanting to know why he saved her when she was abandoned, but his answer is that she saved him first. When they were children, nobody wanted to be around Rude because he was tall and looked angry, but Manisha was always with him and didn't seem to be afraid. In the end, Rude thinks he made the right choice staying with her, and she cries hearing this, apologizing for thinking he wasn't happy and for how she behaved. The two hug and Manisha thanks Luna for her help, since without her, she would continue regretting. Luna is embarrassed by this, so she runs to make the meal. When they go to help her, they hear a knock on the door. We see it's Nin, and she explains she got time off to visit him. Rude finds it strange that Kilgas allowed it, but Nin explains she's working at the church now. She tells him that the group was disbanded, because after he left the group, they could no longer clear the labyrinths. We see their last fight in the labyrinth. The whole group is exhausted, and Kilgas seems confused about his damage, and he also realizes he is losing more defense than usual. He tries to figure out the difference from before, and the only thing he can think of is Rude. Another monster appears, so he uses his vital explosion, and he realizes his shield is reduced when activating it. He understands the cost of his ability, but realizes that since Rude left, he has less damage and his shield doesn't last as long. Even so, he refuses to accept that he made a mistake in expelling him. He manages to knock down the monster, but still can't defeat them. The other members suggest that the floor is too high for them, but Kilgas refuses to retreat and orders Nin to heal him immediately. 
He tries to launch another attack, but this time his ability doesn't work. Before they react, the creature rises and attacks Kilgas, destroying all his defense. His bones break without his defense, and he is thrown away with a punch. The monster advances again, but Lilia rescues him, and they teleport away. In the hospital, he blames the new tanks for the defeat, but Nin explains the blame is actually his, and she remembers that lately he stopped training and was always drinking, relying on his ability, mentioning that it won't be enough to keep him in the labyrinth. Kilgas remembers that his ability always worked, but Nin thinks it was because Rude was around. For him to use his ability, he needs to give up a part of his defense, so Rude's unknown ability might have helped him unleash his full power. They realized that Rude treated the defense of others as if it were his own, and since his defense was level 9A999, it made Kilgas stronger. Kilgas continues refusing, so the girls end up deciding to leave the group. After that Nin explains the group's downfall, and Rude apologizes for not discovering his abilities earlier, but Nin apologizes for making him suffer damage on her behalf. Rude tries to say that it's his fault again, but she changes the subject. Seeing the other girls, she introduces herself, and informs them that she will visit the orchard for a while, so they will see each other around. Rude is concerned when he hears this, because she has no place to stay. Manisha offers her room to her, but Rude explains that Nin is the daughter of a noble and a saint, so he fears being punished by the church if he offers inadequate facilities for her, and he decides to sleep in the living room and leave his room for Nin. Suddenly, Philly appears desperate, and she informs them that a mysterious monster appeared in the orchard. When they arrive, Nin expels the magical miasma covering the monster. His magical essence has taken over it, and Rude notices that the creature structure is different from any other he has encountered before. A knight tries to attack the creature by surprise, but ends up being thrown away, and Rude realizes that it was Philly's father, Vuild. The creature advances to attack again, but Rude uses his ability to attract his attention. He asks them to attack together, since he will draw all the attacks. The monster manages to resist, and after Rude loses his defense, Luna and Manisha heal him. So he explains to the others that all the damage they suffer will be absorbed by him, and they can attack without fear. They repeat the attack, and the monster begins to flee, but Luna stops it with a stone barrier, Rude decides to use his life conversion ability, converting the 20,000 damage he's taken into a single attack, and he completely blows the monster away, but he thinks he used too much force when he looks at the destruction he caused. Vuold thanks him anyway, because they managed to defeat the threat without any victims. After analyzing the monster, they discover that it was a C-ranked black wolf, but Rude finds this strange, since its strength was comparable to a rank A. He notices two magic stones, similar to those used to create homunculi. Nin deduces that it was put in the wolf on purpose, since a monster normally only has one. She points to a seam made on the creature, indicating that it was artificially created. Although creating homunculi for battle is forbidden, Rude knows that there are many who would be interested in these creations, so he suggests reporting it to the local lord. The next day, Rude continues thinking about the monster, but Manisha comes and sits on his lap, asking him to read the paper to her. He panics, thinking she can read it herself, but she asks him again, and he can't handle how cute she is. We learn that labyrinths have been popping up quite frequently, and there has even been one that has appeared near their village. Manisha turns the page, and they see there's an article about Kilgus. Manisha knows Nin doesn't like him because of the way he treated Rude, and Rude is aware of her feelings. Manisha points out Rude knows Nin likes him, but thinks he doesn't act on it because of her. Rude thinks he can't handle getting into a relationship, but Manisha tells him not to worry, thinking he should go for it if he finds the right person. Back at the orchard, Philly holds a meeting, mentioning how a chameleon gorilla was spotted nearby. They are usually found far in the south, but it seems one has managed to make its way to the village, so they are tasked with investigating and subduing it. Nin notices Rude's new sword, so he explains how it was made by Milena and Raisel, noting that it also has the enchant skill. Luna wonders what that does, so Rude explains that different elements can be used to change the magic stone's mana and enchant the weapon. Rude decides to show it off, creating a flame which he uses to enchant his sword with fire, explaining how it can give him an advantage against certain monsters. Luna thinks it's amazing, but another adventurer scoffs at him, thinking such a sword is wasted on him since Rude is only F-ranked. 
The boy tells him he should just go home, and Luna yells at the boy to defend Rude, but Rude calms her down, saying he'd rather be underestimated. Luna understands, but she says she doesn't like seeing him get bullied. Nin tells him he should just update his rank, revealing that she even offered to name him as a knight, but he turned her down. The adventurers are shocked to hear this, and Rude explains he didn't want to raise his rank because the guild would start summoning him. At that moment, the chameleon gorilla suddenly appears and jumps at them, but Philly blocks its attack. Rude uses his taunt skill to grab its attention, and while it starts punching him, the others are able to attack it. But Rude feels something is off, and two more gorillas suddenly appear. The group is surrounded, and Philly starts to panic, but Rude snaps her out of it, telling her she needs to be strong as their leader. Philly tells everyone to regroup, and Rude provokes all three of the monsters. He knows that the gorillas are weak to fire, so he enchants his sword and manages to take one of them out. Philly is also able to kill one of them, so there's only one left. The gorilla charges at Rude, but he withstands it, and Luna attacks with her wind magic, while Nin binds its movements with water, giving Rude the chance to deliver the finishing blow. The guards celebrate their victory, and the boy from earlier apologizes for making fun of him. Suddenly, the bodies of the gorillas dissolve, and Rude realizes they died just like monsters from a labyrinth. Nin calls out to him, and we see they found the entrance to the labyrinth. Back in the town, the group celebrates, thinking the labyrinth will bring people and growth to the area. Luna thinks it's good news, but Rude isn't so sure. A knight tries hitting on Manisha, but Rude appears behind him and quickly drags him away. Nin wonders if Luna is enjoying herself, but she points out how Rude didn't seem too happy. Nin thinks he must be worried because labyrinths also can bring problems, explaining that if the monsters aren't defeated, they can sometimes come out like the gorillas and cause trouble for the people outside. Luna thinks they just need adventurers to kill the monsters, but Nin notes that that also brings problems since anyone can become an adventurer, it attracts all kinds of weirdos. Luna wonders how adventurers should be organized, so Rude mentions clans, explaining that multiple parties can form a clan, and only adventurers who are part of a clan are officially recognized by the nation. But since there is no clan in their village, Rude worries that the adventurers that come will just do whatever they want. Rude worries for Manisha, but Philly suddenly runs up to him after drinking and tells him how great he is. One week later, we see two adventurers arguing in the street, but Rude breaks them up, causing them to run away. Nin joins him, thanking him for his work patrolling the town, and she can't believe how many adventurers have already shown up. Rude says it hasn't been easy, and we see there's another fight breaking out. There's Boo from the Black Dragon Clan and Gurley from the White Tiger Clan, who are both recognized as Rank A. They prepare to fight, but Rude tells them to stop. They wonder who he is, telling him to settle which clan should be allowed into the town. Rude tells them they can both leave if they are going to cause trouble, but one of the black dragons attacks, telling him to show respect. Rude easily stops him, and Nin prepares to retaliate. Rude tells them that the town has its own rules, and he's ready to take them on, but the men quickly apologize to him, and they suddenly ask him to join their clans instead. The two men argue over him, but Rude tells them to move along. Nin is surprised they tried to recruit him, and we learn he once dreamed of joining a clan where it could be like a family. A guard comes up to them, telling Rude that Vuold is looking for him, so he heads over to meet him. Vuold talks about the situation in the town and reveals the Lord has given them two options. The first is for Rude to create his own clan and become its leader. Rude finds this too sudden, but Vuold notes how the people have been praising him for some time. However, Rude wants to focus on healing his sister, so he doesn't think he can take the position. Vuold notes that it's the will of everyone in the town, but he mentions the second option, which is to destroy the labyrinth. Rude thinks that would hurt the town's development, but Vuold notes that the nation can't afford to manage all the labyrinths that have appeared. So if he isn't able to form a clan, the Lord has requested for him to join the party exploring the labyrinth and help destroy it. Rude thinks about what he should choose as he leaves, but there are suddenly two men who cause a scene. He wonders if forming a clan is the only way to control the situation in the town, but Luna suddenly rushes to him, telling him to come back to the house. We see Manisha struggling, and Rude wonders how she's doing, but Gigi tells him she'll be okay. 
Rude is relieved, but he thinks about if he were to become a clan leader, he wouldn't be able to go into the labyrinths anymore, so he won't be able to find the treasure to save his sister. He asks Luna and Nin for their help, deciding to destroy the labyrinth. Nin wonders if he's sure, since it will deprive the town the opportunity to develop, but Rude thinks if he needs to choose between the town and his sister, then he would choose Manisha. Luna wonders if he would really need to stay in town if he became the clan leader, suggesting he could just choose someone to be his representative and lead the clan in his place. Rude doesn't want to put that pressure on someone, but Luna volunteers to protect the town in his place. She feels that the town has been kind to her, so she wants to help him. Rude is still not sure, but Nin says she will help Luna, mentioning she wanted to quit being a saint so she can also join his clan. Rude wonders why they are going so far to help him, but Nin points out how he has always protected them, so it's normal to want to help him. Manisha joins them, and Rude tells her she needs to rest, but she says that she's no longer the person he needs to protect, saying that she loves the town, and if there's a way to protect it, she wants him to do it. He sees that she's barely standing, so he picks her up, and he declares that he will protect both the town and his sister. But before he can form his clan, he is summoned by the adventurers who were exploring the labyrinth. It turns out to be his old party, and the twins introduce themselves again. A church knight named Sugal also introduces himself, and Luna greets everyone. Rude enters the tent where Kilgas is, and Nin gets angry, thinking him as cheeky for calling Rude after what he did. But Rude calms her down as he holds no grudges. He asks Kilgas why he called him, and Kilgas reveals that his group found a guardian that had its own consciousness, which surprises Rude, as they have never seen a conscious guardian. Rude understands the situation, and Kilgas asks him to explore the labyrinth and complete the mission without him. The twins correct his words, explaining that this is Kilgas's way of apologizing. Kilgas seems embarrassed by them saying this, and states it's good that Rude does the labyrinth for his sister. Rude is surprised that he remembers his reason, and Kilgas confesses he has accepted that he was fighting thanks to him. Rude seems happy, and agrees to do the labyrinth. As Rude is leaving, Kilgas apologizes and asks him not to die. The group heads to the labyrinth and uses the teleport portal that takes them to the first floor. They appear in a sunny place, and Rude warns Luna that the sun doesn't move, so her perception of time could be misled. The portal under their feet disappears, and they explain that the way out is to find another portal. But Nin explains that they have another way, because Lily possesses the dungeon walk skill, allowing them to travel between floors they have already visited. Usually the limit of a skill is six, so the group is limited to six people. Rude asks Nin to show a spell similar to the skill, so Nin teaches her a spell for emergency escapes. Luna manages to learn it on the first try, so everyone gets impressed, while Rude thinks it's because of her ability as a homunculus. A herd of Chameleon Kong's heads towards them, and the group quickly seems ready for them. He taunts one, while another goes towards Sugal, and the last one against the girls. Lilia appears in the air and cuts one of the monkeys, as the group maintains position to finish them off. Someone watches them, and it seems they are doing well. They advance to the next floor, and Lilia warns that this was where they found the Guardian. Suddenly, Fieldosaurus approach to attack them, and Rude dodges, but notices they are faster than normal thanks to the Guardian. He decides to contain them while the others look for the portal, since they must conserve energy to fight against the Guardian. Nin finds the portal, so they quickly head to it. The Guardian watches them quickly passing through the floors, thinking that it is the right decision. They arrive at the ninth floor and are about to advance to the tenth, as Rude thanks everyone for helping him with his selfish goals. The others don't mind, as they know how important family is. Nin reminds that they haven't finished yet and extends her hand to go together, so they go to fight the Guardian. They appear in a dark field, and the Guardian congratulates them for getting there. Rude is tense meeting a conscious Guardian, and he introduces himself as Marius. Rude mentions how he had appeared on the fifth floor before, but Marius explains that he decided to wait for them on the tenth floor so he could use all his strength. He lunges at Rude, who blocks, but thinks his arms are going to fall off. Rude tries to talk, but Marius wants to speak through battle. Everyone starts to attack him, as Marius manages to block them. He decides to show his monstrous form and warns that it's better to run. He starts to transform into his true form, but Rude can't retreat for Manisha's sake. He endures the blows he can and realizes he got stronger. 
The sisters combine their abilities to wound him, as Sugal and Rude take turns to tank the damage. Rude sees that if they continue like this, they might die, so he commands the girls to heal and taunts Marius' attention. Before entering the labyrinth, they decided it would be a battle of endurance, and the trump card would be the attack that Rude can accumulate in exchange for lost defense. Now Lilia connects a powerful attack but finds herself in a bad state. Luna worries about her and wants to advance, but Nin stops her, saying she must continue staying back and be patient. Luna heals the tanks, while Rude notices how his shield received 30,000 damage, so he decides to attack. He approaches, but Marius acts first, so Luna defends him. He sees an opportunity and attacks with all the power of life conversion. He hits, but the Guardian is still standing. Rude knows the attack worked, so he just needs to use his skill one more time. Marius throws a rock at them, and Rude manages to block the attack, but Lily falls from exhaustion, and Sugol receives a direct blow. He wants to continue, but Rude can see his body trembling. He looks at Nin and Luna who are also tired and thinks he doesn't want anyone to risk their lives for him, so he announces that they should retreat. Nin doesn't understand the order and she refuses to accept it since they have come too far. Sugal also insists on continuing to fight and says he will give his all, as Nin explains that they cannot run away. Rude receives another attack from the Guardian and he also decides to keep fighting for his sister. The two sisters merge with a kiss and become one, and they attack Marius several times, as Rude recognizes the effort his companions are making. When the Guardian's shield breaks, Rude leaps and attacks him with life conversion. But the skeleton remains standing and attacks back. The hit will break Rude's defense, but he takes it anyway and uses the damage for another life conversion, so they finally manage to defeat the Guardian. When the dust settles, Marius appears in his human form congratulating them. He no longer has strength to continue, and Rude wonders if that was all. The Guardian says he must be killed, but Rude wants to talk, and asks if he has the Labyrinth's treasure. Marius hands it to him, explaining that he can make a wish, but the treasure will break afterward. He asks Rude to kill him, but Rude doesn't want to destroy the Labyrinth so that Avancha can continue to prosper, and he asks Marius to continue being the Guardian. Marius accepts because he loves fighting against strong people, wanting a rematch against Rude. Back home, he gives the treasure to Manisha. She tries to refuse, but he insists that he did it for her, so his wish would be the same. Manisha uses the rune and wishes to be healed. Rude asks if she feels better and Manisha thinks so, since she feels more energetic and can move without getting out of breath. Rude hugs her, happy to help her, and that all his effort was rewarded as he cries tears of joy. After that, we see the city streets filled with many people arriving, and Rude realizes he will need to break up fights again. The adventurers he stopped last time greet him, and they are Boo and Gurley. The two ask if he doesn't have anyone to help him, thinking it's hard to manage everything, so Rude confesses he wants to propose something. We see Nin and Rude as he mentions he needs collaborators for the clan. Manisha is busy with bureaucracy, so he tried to propose to Lilia, but she didn't feel ready for it advising to seek an alliance with other clans and making a deal that benefits both, since it's not good to be in debt to anyone. They need to think about what to offer, but Rude believes the only thing they have is their strength, since the news that they ended the Guardian has spread. He has taken care of what he can about the clan, and Nin confesses how she knew he would be a good leader and thinks the clan will grow thanks to him. She seems a bit disappointed, so Rude asks about it, and she says it's because this way they won't have any time alone, which makes him blush. Nin says if he needs to bring people in, he can use her for advertising, but he refuses, knowing she wouldn't like that. They are interrupted by Marius, who wants Rude to take charge of the labyrinth, but Rude replies that he already said no. So Marius insists on joining the clan to stop the fights, and Rude explains that's not all they do. He asks Marius if he holds any resentment towards humans, so Marius looks serious at him, and as Rude thinks he was right, Marius assures he has no issues. He agrees to help if Rude takes charge of the labyrinth, so Rude sighs but accepts Marius into the clan. He asks how to manage the labyrinth, as Marius rushes there to explain. After arriving, Marius creates a portal, and they reach an area where the labyrinth was managed. He explains they can view the labyrinth and summon monsters using points that they accumulate over time damaging the adventurer's shields. So he demonstrates this and summons a goblin near some adventurers. 
Rude wonders what else he can create, and Marius shows the monsters available. He can also acquire others by purchasing with points, as Rude notices one that is absurdly expensive. Marius explains there's also a gacha system, where they could get a random monster. Rude creates a random monster, and he unlocks the slime. The slime becomes attached to him, and now they can summon slimes inside the labyrinth. He thinks about what people most seek in the labyrinth, which are the materials from the Fieldosaurus. Over time, this material will become more common, but if they create new monsters, they can keep the adventurers in the labyrinth. As Rude ponders, the slime hits him for not paying attention, and Marius comments that they gained 1000 points with the attack, so the slime must be special. The creature seems to apologize, but Rude thanks it, because it gave him an idea. He agrees to manage the labyrinth, but asks Marius for more time, because he needs to find a way to bring more adventurers, so Marius should take care of the labyrinth for a while. It seems the slime won't leave Rude's side, so Marius says he can take it with him. Arriving home, Rude shows the slime, but the girls get defensive. He explains it will be the mascot, and Manisha finds it cuter than the ones she usually sees outside. They need to decide on a name. But Luna notices that when he chose her name, he decided quickly, so she gets offended because he didn't think too much about giving her name. Rude tries to defend himself saying he thought about it a lot, but Manisha guesses he chose Luna because of Lunafia petals. Rude gets nervous, so he quickly names the slime as Lime. It seems to like the name, and the girls tease him for making him uncomfortable. We see that Boo took Rude's offer to his clan, but the vice leader doesn't see why they would ally with a peasant clan, but later, both Boo's and Gurley's leaders decide to send an invitation. Days later, Rude and the others arrive at Kaled City. He thanks Lilia and Lily for accompanying them, and Lily seems excited to go to the ball. Marius asks about the flags around, and Rude explains they are the flags of the Black Dragon and White Tiger clans. We see the day Rude received the invitation from the clans to attend the ball. Nin notes that the invitation doesn't say if they accepted the alliance, so Rude explains they rejected it, and would only agree to help them if they submitted to them and handed over Nin. They had anticipated this, as Nin is a well-known saint, and all the clans Rude tried to contact wanted her. She asks if he plans to hand her over, but he explains he would never think of that, which moves Nin. Despite rejecting their conditions, they still decide to go to the ball and speak directly with them. Marius starts to think, and remembers that at the lake he was able to see the entrance to another labyrinth with another conscious guardian, and this labyrinth was in Kaled. Rude gets excited and says it's important information, so he starts thinking about conquering that labyrinth to get another rune, and maybe Manisha will fully recover with it. Nin reports that they only managed to reach the 50th floor in that labyrinth, as none of the two great clans went beyond that. But Rude believes he can conquer it with Marius's power and the magic of Luna and Nin. So now their goal is to conquer the labyrinth and secure an alliance. They are about to go to the ball, and we see Rude and Marius in suits, when Nin arrives in a beautiful dress that enchants Rude, as Luna arrives in a maid's outfit, since she can't wear a normal dress, so she can hide her gem. Even so, Rude says it suits her well, and the twins arrive. Lilia feels shy, but Lily assures her she looks cute, leaving Rude surprised. They arrive at the hall, and when they enter, the first to draw attention is Nin, as everyone is thinking her clan will join theirs. Nin is offended at them for not recognizing Rude as their leader, but he is not worried, since he believes he will eventually be respected. Suddenly, the lights in the hall go out and focus is on Ike, the sub-leader of the Black Dragons, and Cynthia, the sub-leader of the White Tiger. They introduce their special guest Nin and ask her to come up to the stage, but Rude knows he needs to correct them, so he goes with her. They are surprised she became an adventurer, and Ike asks who is accompanying her. Rude steps forward and introduces himself as the leader of Nin's clan. Ike realizes Rude was part of the heroes group, but questions if he wasn't expelled for being useless, since he was the one who advised the hero to expel him, as tanks are not useful in labyrinths. He asks Nin to join them again, but Cynthia intervenes as her clan also wants Nin. Rude interrupts them, saying neither of them will have Nin, and he declares he came to make an alliance. Everyone mocks him for asking for an alliance, as Ike admits he cannot trust a team led by a tank. He asks Nin if she is sure, and she confirms it, telling everyone that Rude is the strongest tank in the world. Rude asks for the microphone and declares to everyone that his group will conquer the labyrinth and prove them wrong. 
In the darkness, suddenly the leader of the Black Dragon comments how interesting Rude's attitude is and tells Ike not to underestimate the newbies, introducing himself to Rude as Goose. While they shake hands, Rude feels Goose's great power. Goose tells everyone that if Rude manages to overcome the 50th floor of the labyrinth, they will make the alliance, and passes the microphone to Ludal, the hidden leader of the White Tiger. She also announces that they will accept the alliance if they manage to conquer the labyrinth, and both hope that Rude isn't just talk. In their rooms, Marius believes Rude was incredible, and he doesn't understand how they can underestimate him being so strong, but promises they will conquer the labyrinth so that no one will mock him again. Marius decides to take a bath, and Rude meets with Luna and Nin. They both think he did great, and Nin shyly thanks him for defending her. After that, the two say goodbye to go rest, and Rude is determined to conquer the labyrinth. Rude sees Lily, and she seems to have a favor to ask. She drags him to the room, as he wonders what got into her. She seems a bit shy, but tells him that she can't tie her dress, so Rude lends her a hand, and she thanks him, explaining that she wants to surprise her sister with tea. Rude is ready to leave, but Lily has another request for him. She is nervous and shares that she was impressed by his speech at the ball, wanting to tell others what she wishes for. Rude wonders what it might be, and Lily asks him not to laugh. She doesn't have a big goal, but doesn't want to lean on her sister forever, so she wishes to be able to assert herself more. She explains that she never worries when her sister is around, so she always makes mistakes without her. Lilia always protected her since childhood, so Lily thinks she is capable of anything. And it's the same in battles, as she just supports her sister from behind. Rude thought it was because she was good at magic, but Lily explains that Lilia is also good, but chooses to fight at close range. She tells him that when they fuse, Lilia is always the dominant personality, so she never fought on her own before. Rude understands why she wanted to talk to him, realizing how hard it is to say a wish to be more independent when she's so close to her sister. So he assures her that she can count on him, and Lily gets excited with this, but she loses her balance and falls. Lilia suddenly appears in the room, seeing Lily in the bed with Rude, and gets furious at him. Rude tries to explain, but she decides to talk on the roof. Outside, Lilia tells him that he doesn't need to be so cautious. She would have pushed him off the roof if it were anyone else, but knows he understands what it's like to have a little sister, so she was just pretending so they could talk. She asks if she ever told him about her parents, and Rude thinks their parents abandoned them. But Lilia explains that their parents were abusive, so they ran away. Their father was especially mean, so it's hard for Lily to have a normal conversation with a man. That's why she wanted to talk to him, because she wants to protect Lily until she takes her to a place where she can be truly happy. Rude admits that Lily thinks she is capable of anything, but he doesn't think so, since Lilia loses her cool when it comes to Lily, but she reminds him that he's the last person who can say that. Lilia smiles and thanks him for listening to her, as Rude assures that she can talk about anything to him. The next day they head towards the labyrinth, as the twins are already there. They explain that they were escorted to the 49th floor, so now Lily can use Dungeon Walk to jump floors. She thinks it's best to take them to the 45th floor to gauge the strength of the monsters, while Lilia reports that she also gathered information. She explains that the two clans used speed-focused parties with four attackers. Each floor has many monsters that inflict status effects, so Rude is excited to be immune to them. Nin finds it challenging, but they decide to do whatever it takes to conquer the 51st floor. They think of a strategy, as Lily declares she wants to give commands during the battle. Rude remembers their conversation and agrees, while Lilia seems surprised. They go to the 45th floor and walk until they reach a fork when Marius notices some monsters nearby. Rude also senses it, and Marius explains it's because he's the manager of the Avancha Labyrinth. He explains that both paths lead to the same point, but allow them to be ambushed from behind in a pincer attack, so they are dealing with a tricky guardian. Suddenly, two monsters appear, and Rude taunts them. He receives a jet of poison, but is immune, and attacks the creature. The Black Owl also attacks, but he manages to fend it off, while Marius finishes the monster. Another Black Owl appears, and Lilia manages to protect her sister. More of them approach, but Lily explains they don't need to fight. Rude understands, so he uses a flashing magic stone. They advance, and Nin praises Lily's commands. She admits she's doing her best, while Lilia looks at her in surprise. 
Min also realizes that now she can choose whether or not to let Rude absorb her damage, so Marius thinks his battle with him made Rude stronger, and he praises Rude, because few tanks can attract the attention of multiple monsters. The others also praise him, and Marius suggests he learns the self-heal skill, but is surprised humans don't know the ability. Rude questions if he isn't human, and the party realizes they know little about Marius. Marius looks serious and declares he is actually a demonoid. Rude is surprised to learn there are also demonoids among humans and demihumans, and that they are loyal to a demon. Marius is able to manage the labyrinth because he's a demonoid, and reveals they were created by a demon to destroy the world. But Nin is shocked by this because they thought the labyrinths were created by God to give them items. Marius doesn't understand where that story came from, but warns that a demonoid must also manage this labyrinth, so he tells Rude to be careful. Rude wonders why he is fighting against his own people, but Marius confesses he doesn't like them and wants to defeat them as Marius, not as a demonoid. He apologizes for joining the party for personal reasons, but Rude doesn't mind and still thinks of him as a friend. Lilia agrees, and as long as he doesn't hurt her sister, she also doesn't mind. So the group supports Marius, who appreciates it. Lily decides to change the topic to discuss the monsters on the 50th floor. Rude agrees, so she proceeds to set their strategy. They advance through the labyrinth until they reach the 50th floor, and a bone dragon appears. Rude taunts the monster, and we see that Lily decided he should take the lead to prevent the others from getting status effects, while Lilia and Marius attack outside the range and suggest enchanting their weapons with fire since it's the dragon's weakness. Rude keeps tanking the attacks and draws the dragon's attention away from the others while Marius and Lilia strike it. But suddenly the dragon charges an area attack, hitting Lilia and Marius. They get a poison effect, so Luna and Nin quickly heals them, while Rude distracts the dragon and Lily uses a fire spell. Rude taunts the dragon again, which uses a sludge attack on him, making his shield heavy. He calls for a water spell to wash off the sludge, and Nin manages to help him. She decides to use the ability allowed to the saint, creating an auto-healing area with shield recovery. They continue fighting the dragon for an hour, but it still stands strong. It suddenly covers itself in poisonous gas and prepares an attack. Lily warns about the flames, so Rude gets as close as possible and uses his shield to block the attack. He uses his provoke again as the dragon unleashes a barrage of attacks. This drains 5,000 points from Rude's shield, so he rushes to the auto-healing area as Marius jumps back to the fight and strikes the dragon. Lilia follows up his attack and the other three take the chance to cast a fire spell. Rude keeps dealing with its attacks until he leaps and uses his life conversion. He finally defeats the dragon and Lily congratulates him for clearing the floor. They decide to advance to the 51st floor another time and choose to call it a day. At night, Lily talks about selling the materials they've gathered and Nin praises her for her commands in battle. She promises to do her best and they decide to celebrate, but Lilia says she's tired and decides to go rest, so Lily follows after her. We see the group celebrating, and Nin thinks there's nothing better than drinking after a raid. Luna wonders if alcohol is that good, so Nin tells her to try it. Rude is worried about a homunculus drinking, but she obsesses with the idea, so she takes a sip, but finds it bitter. Nin changes the subject and talks about Lily and Lilia being closer to Rude. He doesn't think anything is different, so Nin asks Luna about it, and she agrees that they seem closer, but Rude wonders if she's drunk. Nin wonders if they're not more than friends, and Rude assures that they're not, so Nin asks if she can be more than friends with him. Rude thinks she's drunk as well, since he already said that his priority now is raiding labyrinths and helping Manisha. Luna asks if he's not dating anyone at the moment, and he confirms this, so she starts to get nervous. She confesses she has a warm feeling in her chest when she's near him, so she'd like to spend more time with him. Rude doesn't know what to say, so he suggests getting her water. When Rude returns to his room, Lilia is in his bed. He asks what she's doing there, and she tells him that she wanted to talk to him, so she asked Marius to let her in, but she ended up falling asleep. Rude wonders what she wants, and she wants to talk about Lily's behavior in the labyrinth. Lilia realizes that Lily wants to change, but she doesn't seem so sure, so she asks him what he thinks about changes. Rude admits he doesn't like change, especially in Avancha. He's afraid of going the wrong way, but also happy that things changed, because Avancha would never be so lively if things hadn't changed. 
so perhaps the best way is to find something to enjoy in the change. Lilia says she's weaker than Lily, but she still wants to support her, and it's sad to see her drifting away. Rude thinks her inability to let her sister go is a bigger problem than Lily's desire to be independent. Rude guarantees that things will change, but he doesn't think there's anything to worry about since they always stay together. So even if things change, the essence will be the same, and her and Lily will continue to be together as always. He thought more than she expected, and Lilia thanks Rude for his help. She states that Lily was brilliant today, and she couldn't look at her, but is determined not to let it happen again. Rude wishes her good luck, and she'll do her best. They go to the labyrinth again, and now they will jump to floor 51. Lily warns that they don't have much information on the 51st floor, but there is fog, so they may need something other than detection magic to find the monsters. Rude keeps her in charge of the detection, while he and Marius will search as much as they can. He tells Luna to be on her guard, but she's embarrassed by what she said when she was drunk. Lily announces that everything is ready, and she uses her dungeon walk. They appear in a dense fog, and Lily informs that her detection spell isn't working. Luna tries to clear the fog with a wind spell, but it doesn't work and Marius explains that the fog is made of mana. He explains that monsters also have mana, so they can try to detect them through that. Rude decides to try, and he can feel something. He uses his provoke, and he's hit by a water spell. The monsters grab them, and Lilia thinks they must be fishmen. Luna tries to use her magic, but she can't find the enemy, so Rude tries to detect their mana and orders everyone to stay behind him. He uses his provoke again, and the enemy really are fishmen. They surround Rude, but Marius manages to defend him since he can detect them blindfolded. The group focuses on detecting the monsters by mana, and they're able to defeat the fishmen. Lily suggests a break, so Nin decides to cook the fishmen. Rude notices that they dropped some first-class items and Lilia confesses that she managed to look at Lily. They advance to a larger room and Marius thinks something is coming. A circle appears and a dark skeleton spawns from it. He has three crystals and Rude feels a high pressure from him. He asks Lily to command and he takes the lead charging against the skeleton, but the yellow crystal protects him and the red one attacks Rude with fire. He wonders about the blue one, and suddenly his attack becomes faster, and it enhances his movements. Rude realizes what the crystals do, but finds the yellow especially irritating. He decides to draw its attention again, so Lilia and Marius attack from behind, but are blocked by the crystal. Rude keeps the pressure and also attacks, but the skeleton uses a flash attack. Rude wonders if everyone is okay, and he sees Lilia acting strange. She attacks Marius, screaming for him to stop hurting Lily, as she starts to have visions of her past. Rude asks Nin to heal her, but Nin reveals that Luna and Lily were also affected. She decides to take care of them first and Rude remembers that only the three of them are immune to status effects. The skeleton attacks him, but Rude uses his life conversion and blows one of the crystals away. He decides to switch with Marius and uses Provoke on Lilia. He pins her to the ground and Lilia screams at him, so Rude realizes that she's having visions of her father. He tries to calm her down saying that no one is trying to hurt them and reminds her that they're strong now. This moves her and she sees Rude in her visions. He states he'll always protect them and she finally calms down. Rude asks Marius to regroup and Marius tells him that they need to get rid of the yellow crystal. The skeleton attacks with fire again and Nin uses water to aid Rude. He charges against the skeleton, but the crystal activates again. Rude notices water passing through the barrier, so he realizes how to penetrate the barrier and explains that maybe the skeleton can't block physical and magical attacks at the same time. They give it a chance, so Lily uses her magic while Rude advances on the skeleton and the magic manages to get past the barrier. They use this to continue attacking and the skeleton tries the flash attack again. But Lilia isn't affected because Nin casts a spell that nullifies status effects. They combine their spells, so Rude jumps in and attacks with his life conversion. This seems to work, but the skeleton uses its magic to duplicate itself. They pressure Rude, but Luna manages to identify the real one, and they attack him again. The skeleton tries to retreat, but Rude and the others manage to defeat it. He gets the magic stone and decides to take a break after finding the magic circle, but Lily can't find it and Rude wonders if that means this is the bottom floor. He asks what Marius thinks, but he's not sure. 
Rude thinks that the route to the next floor is sealed for now, so he decides to turn back, and Marius thinks this guardian looks unusual. A girl suddenly appears behind Rude, and she bites his neck. Four more skeletons appear, and Rude knows they can't deal with them. But the girl wonders if she programmed the skeletons to keep appearing, and gets rid of them in a single attack. Rude is impressed, and Marius states that he wasn't expecting a demon lord. Rude wonders if she's the guardian of the labyrinth, and she demands that they surrender to her eye. They feel an overwhelmingly powerful magic, but Rude is able to withstand it. She's impressed that Rude wasn't hit with status effects from her magic and thinks that divine skills are annoying. She wonders why Rude isn't intimidated, and he explains that he's looking at a cute little girl. She likes his words, but Marius warns that she's a 300-year-old granny. She gets angry at Marius, thinking of him as nothing more than a failure, but Rude stands up for him. She wonders if he joined the humans, so Marius explains that he just dislikes the rest of the demon lords. She thinks he should already know that he's no match for her, but Rude reminds her that it's not just him she's up against. She doesn't seem impressed, as none of them are a match for a demon lord. Rude reminds her that humans are strong together, so she challenges them to defeat the Kaled Labyrinth's guardian, and introduces herself as Aemon Sloth. Luna finds her mana impressive, but Rude takes the lead and rushes towards her, but Aemon pushes him back with her wind. Marius attacks with Lilia, but she defends against both of them. Lily and Luna cast spells, and Aemon deflects with a whirlwind, as Rude notes that she doesn't focus only on him even with his taunt. Aemon states that such attacks won't affect her, but Rude decides to keep attacking. She dodges him with her wind, and Nin uses her magic to put her down. Lilia continues the attack, but Aemon blocks it. Marius advances too, but she easily pushes him back. Rude advances again, and Aemon states that desperate attacks won't work. But it was a distraction, so Lily attacks from behind, and Rude throws a flashing magic stone. She can't see, and Marius and Lilia take advantage of the opening. Suddenly, Aemon explodes, and a tornado appears. She warns she won't be careless anymore, as Nin uses her skill to buff the team. Aemon transforms into a giant wolf, and they're overwhelmed by her howl. Rude asks if Marius can fight in his demon form as well, but he explains that it makes him attack everyone, so they decide not to use it. Rude keeps her busy while Lilia and Marius try to attack her, but her fur is like armor. She attacks Rude, and he notices that her attacks are simple, but she's stronger now. Lily and Luna cast a long-distance magic, but it's not effective, so Rude states it's going to be a long battle. She pressures him again, but Marius manages to cut her after gathering his strength. She starts to howl, and Nin decides to use a spell to nullify status effects, so she warns Rude she won't be able to heal them for a while. Rude's defense continues to drop, and Marius wonders if he's okay. Rude explains he's fine, and as long as he doesn't fall, they won't lose. The battle goes on, but she weakens and wants to flee, so Lilia lands another hit on her. Rude notices her movements slowing down, and suddenly she starts to unleash a blast of wind. Marius can't get closer, and Nin realizes it's a barrier that attacks anyone nearby. Rude notices her stone shining, so he thinks they must destroy it to defeat her. Lily commands Nin to nullify the wind barrier, so she starts to pray, and Rude states they need to buy time. They join forces, but Rude struggles to breathe and withstand the wind blades. Nin finishes her spell, and she manages to nullify the wind barrier. The wolf tries to flee, but Luna won't let her, while Lilia and Marius attack her legs. She protects the stone, but Rude decides to use his attack with 30,000 defense absorbed. She jumps up after the cut, and Rude realizes she's preparing an attack. He tells everyone to dodge, but he's caught by the whirlwind. He manages to withstand it and survives, but loses all his defense. Nin asks if he's okay, and they see Marius and Lilia on the ground. They're alive, and the beast stands staring at them. Rude doesn't want her to attack them again, so he asks Nin and Luna to heal them while he holds the guardian. Nin reminds him he lost his shield, but Rude plans to use his skills without it. They decide to trust him, and Rude charges in, thinking it's his duty to protect everyone after dragging them into the labyrinth. She attacks him and this time he feels pain all over his body. Aemon tries to use her magic, but she's too weak. But he also can't hold on any longer and thinks they'll need to retreat, but Lily says she can still fight. She asks Nin and Luna to get ready because she'll be the attacker now. 
Rude wonders what she's doing, so Lily declares she wants to continue fighting. Rude thinks she's crazy, but they decide to continue. Rude can't keep taking hits without defense and Nin takes care of him. The fusion is ready and Lily continues charging against it. Rude notices she has the same speed as when Lilia takes control, but her movements are predictable. Lily explains she's still not used to the body, but Rude thinks she should create her own way of fighting. He explains he'll tank until she gets used to it. He knows they don't have that time, but he can't complain when everyone is giving their all. He's pushed far away and he can't receive any more attacks. He sees Marius and remembers how he uses his mana as a shield, so he decides to try that, creating a shield at the last second. He tries to use all the mana in his body and finds that the pain has diminished. He manages to block another attack and Lily strikes her with her sword. Rude notices her sword with the four elements, while she uses all of them at once and delivers the final blow. Aemon is defeated and Rude catches Lily. He thanks her for her help and Lily explains it wasn't just her. The fusion ends and Rude lets them rest. He asks Aemon if she still wants to continue the fight, but she tells him she can't move. Rude wonders if she has a magic stone that grants wishes, so she gives it to him. She wonders if he's going to finish her off, but Rude wants to know how many demon lords and what their goals are. She's not sure about the number, but it's all just a game to see if they can destroy this world. Rude asks about her relationship with humans, but she doesn't understand the question, so he asks her to help them, because he needs strong allies against the demons. She admits she's not attached to the demon lord title, so she accepts his proposal. Rude decides to return, but Aemon warns she needs to be carried. They recruit the guardian Aemon Sloth, and after that, the clan's ball is held, and Rude announces that they conquered the labyrinth, achieving an alliance with the two other clans. They return to Avancha, and Rude misses Manisha. Lily takes the opportunity while the others are sleeping to talk to Rude, and thanks him for what he did in the labyrinth, and she gives him a kiss. Rude is surprised, but Lily sleeps again. He decides to ask about it later, but suddenly he hears Lilia's voice, and she also thanks him. They arrive in Avancha, and Rude gives the stone to Manisha. She uses it, and she feels her body lighten. She also thanks Aemon, and she promises to make her all kinds of food. The next day, Manisha gives a list of requests to Rude, and he's surprised to receive so many petitions from the residents. The town is developing rapidly, and he's relieved to be allied with the two other clans. Nin suddenly appears out of breath, and she shows an injured girl who's a homunculus like Luna. She wakes up and begs for their help. She tells them that her friends were attacked in the forest, so Nin and Rude decide to investigate. Luna wants to go too, but Rude stops her and thinks it's better for her to stay and treat the girl's wounds. They run into the forest, and they see homunculi fighting each other. Nin notices that the homunculus on one side have emotions and they have a disadvantage. Rude joins the battle and tries to talk to the others, but they keep attacking him. He pushes them back and explains that a girl asked for his help, so he asks if she's their friend. The others keep charging at him, and a girl named Samina states that they're friends of the girl he met. Rude asks about the ones attacking him, and he discovers that they're combat homunculi from the kingdom of Brunquelas, the country that Luna escaped. Rude asks Nin to take care of them, so she uses her healing. We see Aemon watching them, and she thinks things are getting interesting. Rude wonders if they have emotions, and Samina explains that they don't feel anything, they're just following orders to exterminate those who escaped. Rude needs to defeat them, but he can't do it since they might be like Luna. Aemon appears and wonders if he can't attack, so she explains that they're like puppets now. Rude thinks she's cold, but knows she said it so he wouldn't feel guilty fighting them. He defends the attacks, but sees them charging again, even after losing an arm. They jump to attack him, so Rude breaks their magic stones, and they disintegrate. More of them appear, but Rude can use mana now, and he uses it to enhance his moves, so he manages to defeat them, while Nin tells him that she's finished healing everyone. Rude explains that their friend asked for his help, so he asks them to accompany him. He thinks they were mistreated by humans, so they might refuse. Samina admits that she hates humans, but they don't have anywhere to go, so she agrees to follow him. They take them to the clan house, and Nin wonders what they're going to do next. She thinks they must inform the local lord, or they won't be able to protect them. The girl from before appears, and she introduces herself as Fia. 
She thanks him for the help and asks to join their meeting, thinking it will be easier to explain the situation if she's there. Rude warns her that they might be afraid of her. Sophia suggests they tie her up, but Rude doesn't think it's necessary. They head towards the governor, and they can hear the villagers talking about the homunculi that arrived. Fia apologizes to Rude for the trouble she caused, but Rude explains that the people of Avancha are just curious because they've never seen a homunculus before. They meet with the governor, and he thinks the homunculi had a hard time thinking about the rumors he heard about Brunquelez. Rude asks if he can shelter them in the city, explaining that they have nowhere to go and they might solve the lack of manpower they have in Avancha. The governor wonders if Rude is thinking about hiring them, and Rude admits that he is, pointing out that they're just like normal people. The governor understands and agrees that they don't look different from humans. He decides to ask a few questions and mentions that there are combat homunculi with enhanced combat abilities and command types like Fia, with thinking ability and self-awareness, so he wonders how homunculus technology advanced so quickly. Fia reveals that the demon lord of greed appeared in Brunquelas 20 years ago. She doesn't know why he appeared, but the advancement in the creation of homunculus was thanks to him, and the kingdom continues to produce homunculus en masse. The governor can't believe that demon lords are real, and decides to take this information to his superiors and promises that Fia and the others will be able to stay in Avancha. As they go back, Fia is happy to be able to stay. Rude asks about Samina and thinks she can fight as well as a battle homunculus. Fia admits that Samina is a formidable force, and they can count on her if something happens. Fia thinks about how Rude made them realize that humans can be kind, and hopes that others will be able to accept them one day. Back home, Rude explains to the others that the town expects them to work while they're being protected, and asks what they are able to do. Sophia mentions that they used to make weapons and even buildings. Rude finds this impressive, but he hears their fears about working for humans again, so he assures them it will be with reasonable conditions, like 10-hour days with breaks, and they're shocked that it's so few. Rude and the others decide to build bathhouses first because of the adventurers, and Nin tells him that Luna seems worried about the homunculi, and wonders if she has a relationship with them. Rude goes to talk to Luna. She's worried and wonders if they will be able to stay after building the bathhouse. Rude explains that the governor left it in his hands, so she doesn't need to worry. She heard what they went through in Quelez and is happy that they arrived in Avancha, so Rude realizes that she doesn't remember much about her life in that country. Rude asks if she told them that she's a homunculus, but she didn't since she doesn't want to cause any trouble and decides to tell them when the townspeople aren't scared, so she will do her best so they can live well until then. Rude is sure she can do it and is happy to have found her. So Luna gets emotional and thanks him from the bottom of her heart. Rude goes to see Eamon and she seems happy to meet him, but he quickly puts her down. Eamon tells him that she's teaching magic now since she has so much free time, so Rude suggests that she help with the construction of the city, but Eamon explains that she only does what is interesting and thinks that the homunculi can help with the city. She's excited about children learning magic from her, thinking maybe one day they can become candidates for Demon Lord. Rude remembers what he wanted from her and asks why the Demon Lord of Greed is producing homunculi, wondering if he wants to invade a country. Eamon explains that he's interested in research, but is the last person who would want to invade a country. She thinks he must be doing this to pass the time, and Rude is shocked by this. Eamon explains that demon lords don't have a lifespan, and they're simply reborn without their memories after they die, so they look for ways to pass the time. Greed always wanted to create the strongest, and the creation of homunculi must be one of his studies. Rude thinks a combat homunculus is the closest to the strongest, but Eamon thinks he's closer. Rude is confused, but Eamon explains that he has a power that even Greed couldn't obtain. He has mana strengthened by the power of the Demon Lord, along with a shield strengthened by God, and it was this power that defeated her. But Rude still doesn't understand Greed's intentions with the homunculi, so Eamon reveals that they're great research objects. Rude gets furious thinking about the things that Greed is doing and asks where his labyrinth is. But Eamon doesn't think he can defeat him and states that Rude's strongest power could be problematic. Mana comes from monsters, and if someone uses too much, the body can turn into something similar to a demon. Rude wonders if he should avoid using mana, but Eamon thinks it's better for him to learn how to control it, since he could become a demon lord, but Rude isn't interested in that. 
So she explains that it's time for her class and says goodbye. Rude thinks he should get stronger to face greed, while a purple glow appears and suddenly Rude hears someone talking in his head. The homunculi quickly begin to build the bathhouse and many residents remain suspicious of them, but they continue working for weeks and their effort earns the trust of more and more people. Meanwhile, Rude continues to train his mana in the city's labyrinth to prepare for greed. He reaches the manager's floor and discovers Nin playing with a baby dragon named Babern, and Marius congratulates her for winning in the gacha game. Lily also gained a companion, a fairy named Lufia, so they thank Rude for letting them use his points, and realize that the labyrinth monsters are close to Rude, thinking being a labyrinth manager is amazing. Marius gets jealous because they didn't do this when he was the manager, and Rude explains it can be too much. Rude announces that the bathhouse is ready, but the residents wonder if it's safe. The adventurers are excited to try it, so they are the first to enter. The girls also decide to use it, and Nin is surprised that demon lords like Eamon bathe. Eamon wonders where Luna is, and Nin explains that she's not used to being undressed with others. Lily and Lilia decide to wash each other, so Nin asks to do the same with Manisha, while Eamon is upset for being left out. She thinks it's a shame it's not a mixed bath, since Nin won't use the transformation magic they practiced. Nin yells that it was a secret, and Manisha wonders why she wants to use transformation magic in the bath. Eamon reveals that Nin wanted to increase the size of her breasts, so Nin threatens to put vegetables in her food every day. Eamon can't believe she'd do that, and wonders if it's because she's the most bosomed of Rude's friends. Lilia and Lily decide to punish her for unnecessary comments, and Manisha laughs at them. Nin wonders if there's something wrong, but Manisha explains she's happy to finally be able to have fun like this. They remember how her condition improved, and promise they'll do more together when she recovers, so Manisha thanks them for it. They hear a noise from the men's side, and the adventurers are begging Rude to let them peek, but Rude doesn't allow them since Manisha is there. They want to see Lily and Manisha, and the girls get angry hearing this. They ask Rude not to waste their time, and one claims he even wants to see Nin, even though she's flat. Nin wonders if she should kill them, but Rude says they're just idiots, because he finds all the girls practically the same size. They finish the bath, and Fia asks if he liked the bathhouse. Rude thinks it's amazing, and a resident wonders if there's something dangerous inside, but he hears the group of adventurers praising the place. Samina also appears, and she hopes he'll try it someday. He agrees since she seems sincere, and the other residents also want to try it. Days later, the residents get used to the bathhouse, so the bond with the homunculi increases. Rude thanks Samina for the service, but she explains that he was kind to them first. Suddenly a guard appears, and he explains that a large horde of monsters is coming towards the city. The news spreads fast, and Rude places a high price on a request to defeat the monsters. He gathers the adventurers at the clan house and starts his speech, explaining that they cleared a labyrinth that even the two greatest clans couldn't handle, so there's nothing to fear. He also states that they will be well rewarded for every monster they defeat, so everyone gets excited. Lilia tells him he's good at speeches, but Rude thinks it's because he didn't mention there are 300 monsters. Lilia assures him they'll stop counting after 100, and in the worst scenario he just has to defeat them all. Eamon and Marius come to speak with Rude, mentioning they can sense a new and powerful labyrinth nearby. Rude wonders if this is related to the monsters, and Eamon thinks they were cloned in the labyrinth and sent to Avancha. Rude is surprised they can do that, and Eamon thinks more monsters might appear, so they decide to help him. Samina states that he can also count on them, and the homunculi will be the sword that protects the city. Rude thanks her, while Babern and Lufia appear to help and Rude has a request for them. Rude starts to fortify the city's defenses when they notice the monsters approaching. Philly leads the army as the monsters start to emerge, and the adventurers realize there are more than 300, but Rude points out that most are just goblins. Philly commands the attack, and many monsters are quickly defeated, boosting the group's morale. The monsters continue to appear, and they attack with magic, so the adventurers realize that these aren't ordinary monsters. Lilili and Marius appear, so Rude takes the lead and taunts the monsters. He uses mana to knock them out, and the adventurers become more confident. Marius and Lilili join him, and Eamon notices Rude is using mana to oversee the battlefield. Philly continues the attack, while the others assist. 
They manage to defeat the monsters, and the adventurers realize how strong Rude is. Rude notices the monsters disappeared, so he knows they were from the labyrinth. Suddenly they see another horde approaching, and the adventurers are frightened, but Rude orders them to hold their ground. The guard reveals more monsters coming, but they are from the Avancha Labyrinth, and they fight alongside Rude. We see that he asked Babern and Lufia to duplicate Avancha's monsters, and he explains that reinforcements have arrived. He asks for the adventurers' support as before, and he charges again, but is surrounded by ogres, so the monsters help him, and the adventurers can't believe what they are seeing. They manage to defeat the horde, and the homunculi praise his strength, while the residents come to heal them and repair their weapons. Aemon praises Rude for using the enemy's trick of duplicating the monsters, so Rude thanks her and says they must raid the new labyrinth to prevent this from happening again. But Aemon reveals that the new labyrinth seems to be controlled by greed. Rude is angered thinking about him, and he emanates his mana. Aemon wonders if he wants to kill him, but Rude explains he is the only one who knows about Brun Quelez, so he wants to capture him alive to get some information, so Aemon gives him bracelets, explaining that they can imprison Greed. Marius also offers to go, but Rude tells him it will be just him and the girls this time, including Samina. She accepts the invitation, but Marius wonders why he is left out. Rude explains that Aemon will stay to help with the magic, and Marius is the clan's sub-leader, so he must stay to protect the city in case Greed sends more monsters. Marius hesitates, but agrees and tells him not to worry, so he and Aemon are responsible for the city, and the others swear to protect Avancha. Rude arrives at the new labyrinth, and Samina wonders if Greed is really in the labyrinth. Rude admits there's a chance, and she explains that all the homunculi know him, so Rude asks her not to force herself, while we see Luna thinking. They enter the labyrinth, but there's nothing there. They can't find the magic circle, when suddenly, they start to feel a strong pressure. A portal appears, and the demon lord Greed greets them. Rude tells Greed to close up the labyrinth and surrender, explaining that he already dealt with his monsters, so Greed must be out of forces. But Greed suddenly shows that there's still an army of monsters heading towards Avancha. Rude gets angry, but Nin tells him to calm down, so he listens to her and declares that Greed won't conquer Avancha with just those monsters. But Greed explains that he has almost unlimited points, and he can send more, so it's just a matter of time. He asks if Luna and Samina are homunculi, leaving the party in shock. They wonder if Luna really is a homunculus, so she shows the magic stone in her chest and challenges Greed. Greed seems excited, thinking she has grown beyond all his other research, wondering if it was because she lived in the outside world. He asks her to come back home, but Luna states that her only master is Rude. The girls wonder why she and Rude didn't tell them this before, so Luna begins to apologize, but they stand by her side, telling her she can explain later. Greed sees this, so he transforms into a demon and decides to take her by force. He charges at Rude, who can't believe how heavy his blows are, so he strengthens his body with mana and pushes him back. Lilia tries to attack Greed, followed by Samina, but he grabs her sword and knocks her down. Rude checks on her, and she asks why he absorbed the damage she received. She states that her purpose to live is to protect the homunculi, so she should be treated as expendable. Rude realizes she's willing to die to defeat Greed, so he asks her to stay out of the fight, since he doesn't want to see anyone die. She claims that her life as a homunculus doesn't have value, but Rude doesn't want to be like Greed, so he tells her not to waste her life fighting. Greed interrupts them and attacks, but Nin and Lily block it with a magical shield. Rude uses Provoke, so Greed turns to him, but Rude manages to push him away. Greed's magic is nullified by Luna, so Lilia and Samina are able to cut him. Greed falls to the ground, and Rude takes the opportunity to put the handcuffs on him. Meanwhile, the residents of Avancha fight against the horde of monsters. We see the evasion tanks are struggling, so Kilgas appears and helps them, telling them not to lose focus because they're doing well. Marius also defeats a group of monsters, but Aemon seems lazy, so Sugal explains that she'll get donuts from Manisha as a reward if she helps, so Aemon decides to join the fight and uses her win, wiping out a ton of the monsters. Rude thinks she's going to destroy the city, and he decides to take Greed to Avancha, but he sees a gem in his chest, and wonders if demon lords have magic stones on their bodies. A portal suddenly appears behind Rude, and something attacks him as he blows it away. 
Rude realizes he's stronger than anything he's faced before, and a man comes out of the dark energy, so Rude realizes he's the real Greed. Greed explains that the first one was actually a homunculus created from his memories and abilities. Greed transforms and attacks Rude, and Rude realizes that even his small movements have great impact, so he uses his mana to strengthen himself. They collide, but Greed manages to put Rude down. Ning uses her magic to help him, and she realizes it's going to be harder than fighting Aemon. Lilia and Lily merge, and they charge on Greed. They pressure him, and Samina sees an opportunity, but Greed sends her flying while Luna prevents the impact. Greed becomes enraged and starts screaming, while Rude wonders what's happening. He charges at Rude, causing an explosion. Rude manages to escape, but the blow takes a chunk of his defense. Lilily decides to take the lead while Nin heals him, and he realizes that even the twins are on the defensive, thinking he needs to end this with a well-timed blow. He taunts Greed, so Lilily manages to land a hit, but it's not enough, and he casts a spell on them, leaving the two girls unconscious. Rude attacks with over 20,000 absorbed defense, sending Greed flying, and he asks Samina and Luna to help the twins, but Greed returns. He suddenly punches Rude, so Rude realizes he's not strong enough, and focuses even more mana into his body. He manages to cut Greed, but he gets blown away. Rude can use his life conversion again, so he uses it along with his mana, colliding with Greed. The girls scream, and we see Rude on the ground, unable to move, and with all his defense lost. Greed is ready to attack again, and Rude tells everyone to run. Everything goes dark, and Rude wonders what happened, while hearing the girls fighting. He tries to stand up, and sees the girls defeated. Luna is the last one standing, but she's no match for Greed, who grabs her by the neck. Rude sees her struggling and tries to stand up. He becomes furious and something inside him changes, as he punches Greed. Nin wakes up and sees Rude is different, surrounded by a red aura. He keeps hearing a voice in his head telling him to destroy everything, and Greed attacks, but Rude grabs his arm. He slams him to the ground and continues to beat Greed non-stop with a mad expression, until Nin tells him to stop. But the voice inside him doesn't recognize her, and he decides to destroy, but she slaps him out of it. Rude returns to normal, realizing he lost his senses due to the mana, but his aura returns and he struggles again, with his mana acting on its own. He remembers what Aemon said before and realizes he could turn into a monster at this rate. Nin talks to him and Rude manages to suppress the mana. Greed stands up again and he shows that his monsters are still in Avansha, but Rude has an idea, so he asks Nin to heal him continuously. He thinks of all his companions in Avansha and thanks Greed, since because of him his skill identified that they were all in the same place, so he uses his life conversion on everyone, allowing him to reach a million defense absorbed. He declares that he will protect everyone as the strongest tank and his attack is able to overwhelm Greed. We see everyone resting after the battle, and they are happy to see Rude and the others returning. Manisha runs up to Rude, happy he's safe as she welcomes him back. Marius and Aemon join them, and Rude thanks them for taking care of the city before the rest of the residents arrive and praise him for defeating the Labyrinth, declaring that he really is the strongest tank. But that's where this video ends. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.